Okay. Um, guys, welcome to the trading room. My name is Sol. Glad to be with you. Let me get started. As usual on Mondays, uh, we're gonna go through the markets. We're gonna scout, scan the market for opportunities for the for the for the upcoming week. So uh, and 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 I believe and we will have a um, um, shorter than usual session. We'll scan the markets and then we'll of course go through the questions you might have. You can type in the chat. Um, so so let's start. And I always like to start the Euro USD. Um, on, on the dailies to see what's going on. And actually this time I would like to go to larger time frames, specifically on the Euro. Let me add here the monthly chart. Oh, it's here, so why don't, why don't I see it? Um, let me remove something here. Okay. I wanna show you the, the monthly chart and look how we are inside this sideways um, range and last month and this is a good opportunity because we're just starting a, a new month so kind of understanding what what can we expect for the upcoming month uh, of course uh, we are we're go going to be trading trading august which usually is a very slow market. At least the first half of, of August tends to be a low volatility market. And we tend to see a lot of sideways movements. We don't tend to see a lot of trends on the larger uh, timeframes. And if you look at last month, uh, look at the, the this formation. We had a, a, a movement that, uh, down to these demands right here. And then a rejection. Okay, we are reacting to these demands right here on the monthlies, and uh, usually after these kind of uh, formations, we tend to see continuation. So on the monthlies, <laughs> we have kind of a, a bullish signal inside of this consolidation. Okay, if this was a, a five-minute chart or our hourly chart. I would be buying this market the same way you can uh, just buy the monthly chart and of course have your uh, your stops in place and your targets inside the consolidation okay um or or maybe maybe stops below you know that that bar right there making it a, a better risk reward ratio trade um but if if we go to the to the dailies now back to the dailies um, we had this divergence, and now we're in, in my trading room, in my sessions, we spoke about this divergence right here. Uh, we have seen a divergence after divergence in the Euro USD. You can see it. You can see the divergence here that led to this movement down. And we had this divergence here that led to this movement down. And last um, month, we had this divergence uh, that is potentially leading to a movement higher. Um, we had uh, fundamentals, it was a point C meeting, I, I believe, uh, that created this movement here and, 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 and the push higher. Um, of course, from here, a market might just, you know, this might be only a pullback from this leg. Okay, so this could be a leg and this a pullback and we might see um, a new test of the lows, but I don't see any supply here to cause that. If any, I see more demand down here. So a push lower, we might see some sideways movement or a little bit of push lower and demand down here that might um, push this market higher all the ways to the next supply available on the daily at least, which is this one right here. So um, my, my bias on, the, on, on this pair for the upcoming week and month is more bullish than bearish. Uh, even if I see some bearish movement, I will look for buying opportunities because that's the, that would continue with the range we are right now in and um, the, the most probable movement, next movement, of course, Fundamentals might come in, a news announcement might come in, 
and create a new unexpected movement, but that would be my, my bias for this week, okay? Bullish opportunities. Um, if we move on to the pound, we see similar but more aggressive movement. We, we saw the, let me just explain these charts. We saw this attempt to break lower and a full recovery, okay, forming this or creating this V shape, which tends to be a, a bottoming pattern. Uh, we tend to see continuation after that. So, uh, but of course, this movement right here, just this leg, is kind of overextended. Okay, we haven't seen any sideways movement or pullback. So, I expect any kind of rest either to this to, to, the, to the side or a pullback a retracement to demand areas let's see if we can find uh okay some demands on the hourly chart um okay let's mark those okay we have demand and we have some more demand down here and of course we have this clear demand down there so pullbacks to that area um might be the movement we want to try to to catch in order to continue higher okay my against my my overall fundamentals and my bias um, is a, a weak dollar so that would be my expected week or month or next weeks um, not forgetting that august we might see a lot of just lack of movement okay Di directional movement so just um just keep that in mind. Again, we don't see any strong supply uh, to push that lower. Okay, there's there's some, of course, there's some supply here, and we are actually reacting to that supply. But I don't see this as a strong enough supply to push this all the way down or create a lower low. So, if any, I we have created a low here, high. I expect a low at some point um, around that area and then to form a low and of course higher high all the way to supply which is um, right there you can see it very clearly let me see how that looks on the weekly and okay you can see it on the weekly look at this okay this formation on the weekly charts okay again re re a lot of rejections a lot of weeks on the bottom side uh, and this nice let me clean that on monthlies again, this formation rejection team bars, and those tend to lead to, to continuation higher. Okay, so that would be my my bias, and I, I expect a similar formation in all, um, in all uh, in all pairs. So let's just go through those, and let me show you some more examples. Um, clean this. Um, dollar franc, we had a, and an, we posted this on our, uh, uh, um, our ideas, trade ideas. Look at this nice Quasimodo pattern. We had this low right here, and we had the left shoulder, the head, a lower low than this one. Okay, and then the right shoulder reacted to this demand right here and the push lower. So this was um, a classic Quasimodo formation. Look at the, the shape. That's a, a powerful trend reversal pattern. And it was just um, that was just perfect. And we had the kind of the neckline here. That we just broke last week so my bias here of course is to the downside i expect if you're not short in this market let me clean this if you're not um, short so i would wait for any kind of movement up um, to continue lower and um, we have nice supply areas over here okay all that all that area right there, which matches with the neckline. Okay, you have you have heard of 
uh, support becoming resistance or supply or demand becoming supply. So now a pullback to test the, that supply area um, would be a good opportunity to sell. And the target here would be this demand down there. So we are getting close to there, but we have some room left. We're now testing these supports. You can see support, support, okay, providing some support. So we might see a reaction to that support, the pullback we're looking for to test supply, fresh, fresh supply and continuation lower all the way to the demands. Okay, that's my, that's my, my call for this week. Uh, I, I see very, a uh, very low probability scenario to the dollar suddenly getting stronger and then, um, you know, reversing actual trends. Uh, after the, the Fed uh, mentioning about inflation going to be um, higher than expected. Uh, so we, we everything points to to a weaker a weaker US dollar so that's the that's the goal and let's go to the USD CAD um, dollar CAD is it's kind of um, it's a harder to read here because we have we have mixed signals and uh, just let me let me look at the chat to see if there's no we're not Um, Steve, yeah, GBP depends on the policy meeting. There's uh, there's no su surprise expected, so we we shouldn't see any. Um, of course, in my and I, I I do care about fundamentals. My but I just think of fundamentals as, as long term directional trends. So I I of course I do trend. I I do care. Um, yeah, we have to, to wait and see what they say at the at the meeting. Um, can I talk about the gold? I don't see I have gold, but I might jump to trading view um, and give you a, a quick explanation. We have time left at the end. Yeah. Uh, Adelaja, uh, welcome. Great to have you here. If you want everyone to, to watch, and this is for everyone, to, to see what you type, just please change your your settings on your chat so everyone can see what you type and not only me, please. Okay, that, that way everyone. Uh, Euro yen, yeah, we'll go there. Don't worry, guys. Let me just go through the... Um, let me go through the, through the majors and we'll go to the... To European as well. So CAD, um, we actually had a, a, the, the beginning of, a, of an uptrend on the on a strengthening, you know, dollar trend. Um, because we and we have uh, spoken about that, we wouldn't have any strong supply here to to push this market lower, and that's why we have we see this these movements. And what now we have. Uh, you know, we, ha we had a low and we had a high and we have a higher high and we created actually, we could mark this once as well, but we are creating um, higher highs. And this was, this higher high was slightly higher, was kind of creating a divergence here, but then this higher was way higher. Okay, so that broke it, that canceled the divergence possible potential divergence there. So that all um, says <laughs> we should be buying this market. But again, that um, is against the overall trend against the on a, on, a, on a dollar weakening. So we have mixed bias here. I mean, this could go anyway, this might be this might form a low here. And then we, we could go higher. Or if the dollar keeps getting weaker, so we might just see a reaction to this supply or this supply, and then, of course, a, a lower movement. I don't see any clear bias here. I have mixed signals. So in those cases where I don't have it as clear, I just prefer to stay in the sidelines. I I, I need some more inf some more information in order to to make a wiser decision if jump, jumping um, long or short on, on this market. Okay. So uh, we have I, I mean. 
mixed signals on this one. Um, dollar yen, just let's look at that quickly. Also, um, also mixed signals. The dollar has been weak, but also the yen has been weak. So we had a few weeks ago, we have an, an attempt to create a higher high right there and that failed. And there's there was no demand back here to, to stop that movement. So we had kind of, we had the, the break of the trend and now we're just moving sideways. Again, this might go either way. Uh, you see there's no clear demand nor supply here. Uh, so we're just moving sideways on this one. And uh, let me just read this. So we had this sideways movement uh, inside all these big sideways movement, I guess. Let me see if we, if we see something clear on other charts. No. Uh, we had this compression, now we're reacting to that, but not, nothing, nothing very clear. So um, I'm on the sidelines on this one as well, um, because if this pushes lower, I don't see any demand here to really stop that movement. Um, but I don't, I don't neither see a strong demand to react and move, uh, move to the upside with enough strength in order to create new highs or something like that. So, just really in the a sideways market here. So I would, I will stay in the, in the, the sidelines for this week on the dollar yen. Uh, and let's just look at the dollar and the kiwi. Um, Okay, here we kind of have a, an established downtrend. So let me clean. So we, this is the latest supply form. Let me just look at that on the hourlies to refine that. Um, and, and again, we have been trapped in a sideways movement for for days now. Uh, and I've spoken to, to some traders, uh, just tell me where I'm getting stopped out too many times. Uh, and, and that's very easy to understand, to comprehend, because they're using a, a, a trending strategy, uh, a trend-based a trend strategy. So they're getting signals to buy here at the bottom of this consolidation, and then the market reverses on them. Uh, and then they get signals to, sh to short down here and then the market reverses on them. So uh, they've been struggling. Um, we do see the trend down, but we do see all, also uh, a lot of tails on the bottom. So creating a rejection, but I don't see a demand here. That's my, that's my, my challenge right now because we are now testing these areas where you can see there's no clear demand. We could say there's some demand but all the way down here. And the clearest demand is all the way far down there. So right now we're just moving sideways and the market needs to, it's going to wait for a new fundamental change in order to either break this range to the upside, and then the target would be this next supply, uh, which is not super strong, but it's there. Um, or it will break strong to the to the downside, and then the target would be this demand right here, and then react from there. So um, I, I don't see I don't see the same uh, strength or or patterns I saw here on the euro or on the pound. Okay, I see them. The, the the Aussie being weak as well. So I will wait for more confirmation. Uh, the Kiwi should look similar, okay? But we we have respected here the range, okay? We're now at these lows. We had an attempt to break 
we had the attempt and then we came back into it. We, we attempt to, to break, we have this uh, whipsaw here and we uh, came back to the, okay, to the range. Um, let me look at that. Okay, if you see the, week, the weekly, you see all the tails on the bottom um, and the month on the monthly chart, we see um, indecision candle. Okay, we have tails on the bottom, tails on the, on, the, on, the, on, on the bottom side, on the top side. So that just uh, speaks about indecision. Okay, so my guess is we will see a push, push higher uh, just because aligning to the Euro and the pound. Okay, but I don't see a clear pattern here as well. You see all just sideways movement. Um, so the pattern has been sideways movement, move sideways up, sideways down. So we might be creating that sideways movement in order to create um, a push higher. If we do see a break of, of that support, then we might we will see prices all the way down there because there's nothing here, there's no demand here in order to stop that one. Uh, but I would be more inclined to buy just because of the, you know, dollar, um, the weakening dollar fundamental and my bias. And I think we have gone through all the majors. Um, so just to recap the majors, um, Euro USD long, pound USD uh, long, franc, short and i'm on sideways okay in the sidelines uh, for all the for all the rest and then we had a request on the euro yen um let me have a Loaded that, uh, not much. Okay, Euro Yen kind of surprises me the formation because we have had a um, kind of weak Euro, but not that weak and a much weaker Yen. So it surprises me to see the Euro struggling to push this higher. Uh, in fact, we have one yesterday and today creating tails in the top. So that usually um, leads to a, to a continuation lower. Uh, we, did, we did react okay, to this demand already. We tested it. Okay, I have this market from weeks ago, I, hear, I, I think, this, this demand. So we reacted already. So if market comes again, I'm not sure how many, if there's more demand at the area, at this area. So I'm not sure if that's going to, to, to hold in case we go and test that, that again. Uh, on the supply side, we are, we are not reacting to any important supply. So we have these tails and I'm just not seeing to what are we reacting. Okay, we see some supply, but all the way to the tops. So those tails that we see, they're not testing that supply. So I guess that's the, you know, the low volatility that I've, I was talking about, uh, just not a lot of um, trending market and directional movements because those tails are reacting to not a lot of supply right there. I mean, there's not a lot of um, volume behind the, the, the pair and little participants that are just moving the markets right now. Um, till, you know, middle August or late August where we have more participants coming in again, and then you know moving the market uh, becomes more more difficult. So, so I'm not sure what's my bias on this pair. I want to say we should be going up, but I just see selling signals. Um, um, we're we're forming um, 
lower lows and lower highs, and we're kind of we're about to form uh, a lower high. Okay, these tails. If we see some continuation, that's so that's bearish signals and bearish bias. Um, but I don't see the supply uh, driving that that movement down. So. So I have mixed signals here as well. So not sure about, okay, I, 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 would, I would need, again, more information about it. Um, I think there was another request. Any other pair, guys? Euro New Zealand, Steve. Yeah, I believe we spoke about this uh, previous week or two weeks ago. We're just stuck, <laughs> right? We're, we're not able to, to, to break that range. So looks like there was attempts to break higher and then aggressive movements lower, but we're just staying there in that range. So there, this market is really waiting for some good fundamentals in order to, to decide if it, this is breaking up or it's breaking down. Um, if I had to, you know, if, if we kind of analyze this in more depth, we are kind of inside the, the range, the big range, we are forming these higher lows. Uh, so the buyers are coming in are coming into the market um, earlier and earlier, okay, at a higher price every time. So they push, they bought at this price and then decided to put a little bit higher and then a, bit, a little bit higher. So we're kind of uh, uh, pushing the market higher. And, you know, at some point, if we think about, you know, this as a wall or as a roof or ceiling or something, there's a limited amount of times the, the market can test a resistance without breaking it. Okay, so as long as we're forming, we're, we're, we're pressing on the highs, at some point the seller here will, you know, give up and we might see a break higher. Of course, the fundamentals will tell and we might see just a, a full break to the downside, but um, if I would have, if I was trading this pair, this is not a pair I trade, but if I was trading this one, um, I would be trading the long side. Okay, I would be wait. I would wait for a break and then a retest and then continuation higher. Um, no, not much. Uh, yeah, pound yen. Uh, pound yen. Hmm. Interesting. So, looks like it wants to turn around, but we have a very nice demand form right there. Let me see if there's any other. Not sure about this one, but surely that one although it didn't have a lot of continuation, so I'm not sure how, how strong will that one be. Um, so we came hard from, strong from this demand, okay? There, there was new uh, demand created here. And if you go to the hour list, you can see it clearly. Okay, you can see the demand. Okay, you can see the break creating a new demand area back there. Um, now it's it was overextended, it's now kind of pulling back. We have that red line, which is a support level um, or the demand in order to buy. Right now, I don't see a lot of supply. Okay, you can see this compression, compressionary channel. Um, so my bias here is to the, to the upside. Um, expecting the pound to get stronger and the yen to remain weak. 
So I would be looking to buy this market. Although this looks for the next, at least 100 pips, something like that to continue down and, and for new participants and buyers to come into the market and then to push this market higher. Um, very hard to, to read clearly. Um, that's the whole range. I guess we can see that clear. Okay. If we look at them, yeah, you can read it both sides on the weekly. This could this could be just a pullback in order to continue higher. This might be a potential double top or or head and shoulders or whatever. But I don't see here. That's the important thing. Strong supply in order to push this uh, higher. So we have demand 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 but i don't see same supply on this side to push this market um, lower at least strong enough to break these lows here so i would stick to the to the to the long side but once price comes either to the red this red line or to this um to this demand here my bias would be to the to the long side to the long side um so soon shong um you're not uh, you're not um certain about pound yen going down or up i'm with you um i don't see it clearly neither so some pairs i, I don't try to you know to to, to 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 push my reading and to to force myself to find a pattern or or key levels or or when when they are not there uh, clearly, so my forecast would or what what I, what I would like to see is a retracement lower to find new demand and then to to push higher. But of course, this could just continue lower. I, I, I mean, mixed signals again. Um, and I think I missed one request, and we'll. We'll do that. That will be the last one. That is Frank. Frank Yen. Let's do that one and we'll wrap up with that one. Let me just bring that one, Frank Yen. Okay, um, we remember from from dollar yen that the franc is getting stronger, at least against the dollar, and the yen being very weak. So we can see that we see the the the, the franc finally breaking, you know, this resistance there, created a fresh demand. Just let me confirm that. You can see, yeah, you can see the supply break here, break here, the demand, I'm sorry. So break, break, okay, so there's some demand there. And of course, if not that, all the way to the bottom. So um, I don't see no reason why this market does not continue all the way to a very clear supply. Let me check how is that formed on the, Okay, so we have this break and we have that break. Um, so those are as well um, supply areas. So right now we should see this continue all the way to test that line. We might see the pullback to the trend line, okay, where the breakout happened, there's new demand. So we might see the test of the, of, of the trend line in order to push this market higher. And the target would be um, this supply area. And that's a very strong supply. So that area, if we test that area without fundamentals around us, I would be shorting as well this market. Um, just because we we should see more reaction to this area. I don't, I don't see the scenario where 
we are very very high in price so i don't i don't expect uh, an easy break of these highs without fundamentals uh, driving it so right now we're in the middle of the way so this needs to go either down so we can buy uh, the demand this one or this one but if the market just continues up If, if it continues just straight up, I'll be shorting all the way because we have a, a lot of supply and I don't, I don't expect without fundamentals, a break of this, of this highest right there. Okay, so that would be my, my reading. And guys, I think we'll wrap up here. Um, so thanks, thanks, thanks all for coming and have a good trading week. Um, Adelaja, um, just send us an email and you can reach out to us with any, any question regarding training you have. Just shoot us an email to help at thefibers.com. So uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for coming. We expect, uh, uh, again, not a lot of volatility this next two weeks. So I don't expect a lot of directional movement. But if any, those are the key levels on the majors and some crossings and some requests. requests. Uh, again, just measure risk every time, uh, look for uh, key signals, key patterns, and, and clear um, and clear entry points okay, for, your, for your trading. With that, uh, have a nice week, everyone, and, um, and thanks for coming. Bye-bye.